Thank you for your interest in the DeForest Area School District facility planning process. This presentation covers three areas currently being studied by the Community Advisory Committee. That is. Enrollment projections take into consideration many factors using data, information, and also what we're experiencing as we look at the area around us. In this presentation, we will be sharing information on the topics to the left of your screen in the hopes of increasing understanding of school enrollment projections. Let's take a look at our enrollment history. This table shows the change in enrollment over the last 10 years by grade grouping. Looking at more recent history, you can see that the district total enrollment has increased due to the adoption. We also track enrollment by building, which allows us to see which attendance areas are experiencing changes in enrollment. We track enrollment by grade level as well. As you can see in the table at the bottom, our smallest class size is at the The district facility study calculated the capacity for each of our school buildings. Elementary capacity was determined by taking the total number of homerooms times the class size. For example, Windsor Elementary has six available classrooms for kindergarten. Using a class size of 23, the capacity would be 138 students. The total elementary capacity is currently 1,470 students using the class sizes in the table. Capacity would be reduced by lowering the class size numbers and more spaces would be needed. You can refer to the facility study for further explanation of the district's current capacity. Ideally, space issues are addressed when the numbers reach the target area. Our current elementary enrollment exceeds the target capacity by 75 students. The facility study also reviewed the district's classroom and program support spaces, such as gyms, administration, cafeteria, library, and special education needs. Several support areas are significantly undersized. In addition, the district-wide operations and maintenance, technology support, and other departments are feeling the strains of increasing enrollment. The gold area represents the Yahara Elementary Attendance Zone. The land west of the interstate is chiefly agricultural. The area east of the interstate is more densely populated with a mix of single-family and multi-family residential homes. The purple area you see here is the Morrisonville Elementary Attendance Zone. 
This area is chiefly agricultural and is not densely populated. The blue section represents the Eagle Point Elementary Attendance Zone. This area is chiefly residential with agricultural acres north and east of Highway 51. You are now looking at the Windsor Elementary Attendance Zone. This area is nearly as large as our Morrisonville Attendance Zone, but it's comprised of a mix of business, residential, and agricultural land. The Windsor Elementary Zone is more heavily populated, less rural, and extends as far south as the Dane County Airport. Please take a moment to go through the list on the left. This list represents some of the reasons why school districts establish attendance zones and also why home buyers take them into consideration when planning to purchase or build a home. The next section of this presentation will be looking at the trends currently affecting our enrollment. As you will see, most factors affecting enrollment are not within our control. The school district is required to provide for the educational needs of all students residing in our district. It's critical that we stay informed about changes in population, economic activity, and area housing in order to fulfill that responsibility. This graph is taken from the Dane County Census for the years 2000 and 2010. The dark outlined area is the result of the census from 2000 and the gray area represents 2010. By comparing the results at different age levels in Dane County, you can note the changes in the age groupings. In almost every age grouping, you can see that the population has increased. We can ask ourselves whether or not the overall Dane County numbers have a direct correlation to our local numbers. We found that the Dane County information does present a mirror image of what is happening in the DeForest Windsor area. The chart at the bottom of the page show that the village of DeForest experienced growth between 1990 and 2000, increasing by 51%, and the town of Windsor in the same time period increased by 16%. If you compare 2000 to 2010, the village of DeForest had smaller growth at 22% while we're seeing the growth in the population of the town of Windsor increase by 41%. Overall, in a 10 year period between the village of DeForest and the town of Windsor, we saw growth in the age group of five to 17, which we consider our school age population. That population grew in the village of DeForest by almost 270 students and in the town of Windsor, their population has grown by 120. That is, represents an increase of almost 400 students in a matter of 10 years. If you look at that information, you can see why it is becoming increasingly more difficult to serve our students without increasing classroom and educational space. We plotted the location of birth to four-year-olds using the information from our recent census. We anticipate we will have steady enrollment at both Eagle Point and Yehara Elementary Schools. We are also seeing clusters of new students in developments in and around Windsor. This shows us that the number of students in all elementary attendance areas will continue to grow, even though current students move up to the middle school grade levels. The DeForest Area School District has been awarded a AA plus bond rating, which represents the strong financial health of the district. Other local economic factors contribute to the favorable outlook for the district. 
the stable financial conditions affect enrollment by providing the ability to address educational needs, maintain our programs, and offer other opportunities to students and members of the community. Please take a moment to review the list on the left and consider how these will impact enrollment in our school district. Our district is fortunate to have many positive elements that will continue to add growth and contribute to our communities in the coming years. The chief factor affecting enrollment is the development of new residential properties. The district can make a correlation between the different types of housing and the number of students to expect from the new construction. Current averages show that the district gains one student for every two new homes. The municipalities in our school district have well thought out plans for growth and development. They have been sharing information about anticipated growth and the timing of major On this map, we've labeled the location of the approved residential developments throughout our school district. You can see that we anticipate an increase in residential housing in three of our elementary attendance areas. We are reviewing plans with area developers to predict the number of homes expected to be built in the next five to ten years. A substantial amount of growth is expected in the Windsor Elementary Attendance Area. The district's total enrollment changes year to year due to the difference in class size between the incoming kindergarten and the outgoing senior class. Fewer graduates and greater number of kindergarten students increases enrollment. A larger graduating class and a smaller number of kindergarten students decreases enrollment. Accounting for changes in those numbers, we have increased enrollment in each of the last five years. This year, 77 more students are being served than last year, which is the largest enrollment increase in over 10 years. Various methods are used for predicting enrollment. Combined, these methods can provide an accurate picture of what we can expect to see in our school age population. The Applied Population Labs has performed a number of enrollment studies for the district. A copy of the most recent study is posted on our website. The example shown here is a grade progression analysis, which uses past history to predict enrollment for the next five years. This table shows enrollment will likely increase by 200 students by 2019. Another method for predicting enrollment is the use of the Dane County birth trends. The enrollment results using the birth trends is very similar to the grade progression analysis shown in the previous slide. The district also calculated our enrollment predictions using a seven-year linear progression model. This model has similar results to the previous two examples. This last graph shows a combination of five other enrollment prediction methods. In every example, school district enrollment is expected to be increasing significantly in the next five years. Enrollment predictions made over a short period of time have a high degree of accuracy, but different methods still result in different numbers. This table compares the variances between different projection methods. The variances range from 30 students next year to 98 students in 2019. When you consider that 98 students would be distributed across 13 grade levels, this variance between methods is not cause for concern. The district selects the methods which best fit what we know by our observations in our local communities and in our schools. Our enrollment predictions show increases expected at all grade levels. 
In addition, we anticipate that new home construction will further impact the number of students attending DeForest Area School District. Increasing enrollment and a shortage of both instructional and instructional support space has been the impetus for this facility study and the work of the Community Advisory Committee. Thank you for taking time to listen to this presentation.